This is Dr. Manish Parikh, the Director of the Bellevue Hospital Bariatric Surgery Program. This is the preoperative information session for bariatric surgery. When we talk about obesity, obesity is determined by height and weight, specifically body mass index. Generally speaking, patients are about 70 to 100 pounds overweight that qualify for surgery. Obesity is determined by BMI. Normal is BMI 18 to 25. Overweight is 25 to 30. Obese is 30 to 35. And then severe obesity is greater than 35 and greater than 40. Generally speaking, it's these last two categories of patients that qualify for surgery. Obesity is not a cosmetic problem. It is a medical problem. What does it mean to be severely obese or to have a BMI greater than 40? It means numerous medical problems directly caused by the excess weight, five times higher risk of diabetes, five times higher risk of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, metabolic syndrome. For women, reduced fertility, joint pains, sleep apnea, even cancer are all associated with obesity. This is a study from a medical journal that shows that a 45-year-old woman with a BMI of 45 dies 13 years sooner. This is from a study published several years ago that demonstrated that for both men and women, as your BMI increases, your years of life lost due to obesity increase. This is due to all the medical complications of obesity, ranging from lung disease, fatty liver disease, stroke, heart disease, even cancer. So again, obesity is not a cosmetic problem. It is a life-threatening medical problem. It is a major epidemic in the United States where two-thirds of Americans are overweight, one out of three are obese, and one out of 10 are severely obese. severely obese. This is a map from 1985 showing the rate of obesity across the country. And you see these light blue states where 10 to 15% of the population is obese or has a BMI greater than 30. Fast forward to 1995, and now you see 15 to 19% of many of these states have a population that is obese. Fast forward to 2005. Fast forward to 2005, and now you see 25 to 30 percent of these states are obese, and in some states, over 30 percent. And more recent data from Fast forward to 2015, and you see more orange and red states, where over 30 to 35 percent of the population is obese. What causes obesity is your energy balance, where the caloric intake exceeds what your body needs. It's heredity, higher risk of others in the family are obese. Metabolic disorders, such as changes in metabolism, how your body gets energy from food, eating and social habits, such as unbalanced diet, snacking, and lack of exercise, and then psychological factors, such as social and emotional eating. What are the treatment options for obesity? There's behavioral counseling, diet and exercise, weight loss pills, and then weight loss surgery, which is known as bariatric surgery. The problem with diet, exercise, and diet pills is that 90% of patients do not achieve sustained weight loss. Often patients lose about 5 to 10% of their excess weight loss, which means if you're 100 pounds overweight, that's 5 to 10 pound weight loss, which from a medical standpoint is not clinically significant. Often patients have the yo-yo effect where they lose weight and then regain weight, often at a higher weight than when they started. The key to weight loss is caloric restriction. I put this picture up for the person that says I eat only one meal a day. Obviously, this meal has more calories than what your body needs in an entire day. So the key is not how many meals you eat. The key is caloric restriction. Caloric restriction leads to weight loss. Exercise maintains the weight loss. That's why it's really important to pay attention to the types of calories that go into your body, specifically changing your dietary behavior, avoiding juice and sugary beverages, avoiding soda, avoiding alcohol and paying attention to how many calories go into your body because restricting the number of calories is what leads to weight loss. That's how surgery works. Surgery changes your anatomy to create caloric restriction. It makes you eat less. It makes you less hungry. It makes you feel full with less food. It makes you slow down eating and chew better, and it makes you avoid certain foods. Right now, surgery is considered the most effective treatment for weight loss. As a matter of fact, Many medications have been taken off the market due to side effects. In general, surgery delivers about 60% excess weight loss at two years, which means that if you're 100 pounds overweight, that's about 60 pound weight loss at two years versus just five to 10 pound weight loss with diet alone. And most importantly, is a major impact on obesity-related comorbidities. Diabetes has been shown to go away completely in almost 80%.
high cholesterol improves or goes away, high blood pressure, sleep apnea all get better or completely resolve after weight loss surgery. So all of the medical problems related to obesity have been shown to get better with weight loss from weight loss surgery, ranging from migraines, pseudotumor cerebri, which is elevated pressure in the brain, high cholesterol, fatty liver, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, polycystic ovarian syndrome, venous ulcers, depression, sleep apnea, asthma, heart disease, high blood pressure, reflux, stress urinary incontinence, which means when you cough, you accidentally urinate, Joint pains, gout, have all been shown to get better with weight loss from weight loss surgery. This is a study from several years ago that was one of the first studies to show that this type of surgery is considered life-saving. In this study, they compared 8,000 patients who had gastric bypass to 8,000 patients who did not have surgery in the state of Utah, and they were trying to answer the question, is what happens to these patients 10, 15 years later? And there are two curves here to focus on. The orange curve are the patients that had surgery. The blue curve are the patients that did not. And this is survival. And this is one of the very first studies to show that patients that have this type of surgery long-term live longer. They have a higher survival, specifically a 40% reduction in mortality, mainly from diabetes, heart disease, and even cancer. This is one of the very first studies to show that this type of surgery is considered life-saving. Another study from Sweden compared 2,000 patients who had surgery versus 2,000 patients that did not and followed them long-term. And what they found is that the patients who had surgery, specifically gastric bypass, they lost weight and kept it off long-term. And most importantly, the patients who had surgery had a lower mortality, so they lived longer. These were the first two studies to show that this type of surgery is considered life-saving. What about sleeve gastrectomy? There was a recent study two years ago that demonstrated that for sleeve gastrectomy, there's also a life-saving benefit that has been shown. The most important slide is this one, which shows that surgery is safe when done at a center of excellence such as Bellevue Hospital. The Center of Excellence is a program from 2003 that's focused on patient safety and quality. Most insurance companies will only cover the surgery if it's done at a center of excellence. If you look at just Center of Excellence data, including Bellevue, there's over 300,000 patients in a nationwide database, and the risk of a serious complication from surgery is about 1%, and the risk of mortality from surgery is less than 1%. So surgery is very, very safe. So to summarize so far, obesity is a life-threatening disease. It's not a cosmetic problem. Surgery is the most effective treatment to date for sustained weight loss. Surgery is safe surgery is considered a life-saving operation. Who is eligible for surgery? You're eligible for surgery if your BMI is greater than 40 or greater than 35 with obesity-related comorbidities such as diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, joint pains. Keep in mind some insurance companies will cover BMI 30 to 35 with select comorbidities such as diabetes. Also, over 18 years old, however, we do evaluate patients under 18 on a case-by-case -case basis in conjunction with our pediatricians. Overweight for at least five years, tried to lose weight and no success, no ongoing substance abuse, psychosis, or uncontrolled depression. Uncontrolled depression. We also want patients that are not smoking or willing to be referred to smoking cessation. Most importantly, that patients understand the need for major change to lifestyle and diet, and you're motivated to make this change and you're committed to lifelong follow-up. In terms of the surgery, it's called laparoscopic bariatric surgery. In the old days, we would make, do the surgery through a big incision. Now we do these surgeries through very small incisions that are about the size of a fingertip. There are five to 10 millimeter incisions. Instead of a large incision, we use a laparoscope and inflate the abdomen with gas. And the advantage of doing this type of minimally invasive surgery is a shorter hospital stay, less pain, earlier return to activities, and less complications. If you look at the number of surgeries done in this country, it's increased quite a bit, mainly due to the safety of the surgery and our ability to do it laparoscopically. This is a, the normal anatomy. When you eat food, it goes down what's into your esophagus and then into your stomach. All of the surgery that we perform is on your stomach. There are three types of surgeries we offer at Bellevue Hospital. There's gastric bypass, gastric band, and sleeve gastrectomy. Which surgery should you have? 
ultimately depend on your choice. It depends on your goals. Is your goal maximum weight loss? Is your goal to lose enough weight to make a major impact on comorbidities? Or is your goal to undergo the least invasive procedure? Because there are differences in terms of weight loss, follow-up, and complications. The gastric bypass is the first procedure I'm going to talk about. On the left is a picture of what the scars look like. It's about five to six small incisions. On the right is a diagram of what the gastric bypass is. We are cutting the stomach to the size of an egg and attaching it to the intestine, therefore bypassing the stomach. The laparoscopic gastric bypass is considered the gold standard weight loss procedure because it has demonstrated the most effective long-term weight loss with over 20 years of published data. It delivers about 70% excess weight loss on average, which means that if you're 100 pounds overweight, that's about 70 to 80 pound weight loss in two years. If you're 150 pounds overweight, that's about 100 to 120 pound weight loss by two years. Keep in mind, the amount of weight lost with each procedure depends on how overweight you are in the first place. This is considered the most invasive procedure because it involves cutting the intestine. In terms of the hospital course for laparoscopic gastric bypass, patients come in the same day of the surgery. The surgery itself takes about two to three hours to perform. All patients are walking six hours after the surgery because this is the most effective way to prevent blood clots. This demonstrates the benefits of doing the surgery in a minimally invasive way because all patients are walking six hours after the surgery. Patients are usually home in two to three days, back to work and regular activities in two weeks. In terms of the diet postoperatively, the first two weeks is a liquid protein diet, the next two weeks is pureed food or mushy food, and then regular food after that. In terms of the follow-up, patients follow up with us two weeks post-op, then six weeks post-op, then every three months for the first year, then every six months for the second year, then every year forever. We still want to follow you forever. We need to check your nutrition labs and make sure you're taking your daily multivitamins to ensure you do not get vitamin deficient. Keep in mind with the gastric bypass, certain vitamins that are absorbed the usual route are no longer absorbed the same way, and that's why supplementation and regular monitoring is necessary after gastric bypass in order to avoid nutritional deficiencies. In terms of complications after gastric bypass, infection, bleeding, blood clots, or pulmonary embolism, these are rare complications, less than 1%. Leak is a complication where the connection is made between the stomach and the intestine. If it doesn't heal properly, it could develop a leak, which could require immediate reoperation and could be life-threatening. Stricture is a scarring at the connection between the stomach and the intestine, usually does not require surgery. And ulcer is, can also occur at the connection, usually is treated medically, and can be worse in patients who smoke after the surgery, which is why it's important to stop smoking permanently. Other complications in include internal hernia or bowel obstruction. It's rare, less than 5%. Severe dumping syndrome, which means you feel ill after eating certain types of food. That usually gets better with dietary modification. And less weight loss than expected or weight regain is about 5 to 10%, with an overall reoperation rate of 5 to 10%. So to summarize for gastric bypass, it is the gold standard procedure. 70% of your excess weight lost by two years, over 20 years of published data regarding how effective it is, more weight loss than the band and the sleeve, less likely to regain weight compared to the band or the sleeve. Complications can be more severe than the band or the sleeve. Next is the lap band. On the outside, the scars look very similar to the gastric bypass with five or six small incisions. On the inside, it's a completely different operation. A band is placed around the stomach, which is attached to tubing, which is then attached to a port which sits under your skin. This is much less invasive than the gastric bypass or the sleeve because there is no cutting of the stomach required. This was approved in the United States in 2001. It delivers about 40% excess weight loss on average, which is less than the gastric bypass, which delivers about 70% excess weight loss, but still more than dieting alone. It's also more gradual weight loss than the bypass, about 1 to 2 pounds per week, and it's adjustable based on your hunger and appetite. In terms of the lap band, on the left is the unfilled band, and on the right is the filled band. The most important concept to understand with the lap band is this picture, which shows the doctor with the special needle injecting fluid into the port, which sits under your skin, to tighten the band. That's how the lap band works. We do the first adjustment six weeks postoperatively, and then we gradually tighten the band over the first one to two years, 
and it takes about six to seven adjustments required to get to the optimal zone. So keep in mind the success of the lap band depends on your coming to our clinic every month for the first month to be adjusted, which is this needle that goes through your skin into the port to tighten the band. If you feel that you cannot come to our clinic every month for the first year or you don't like the idea of adjustments, then the lap band may not be for you. Generally, the lap band delivers about one to two pounds per week of weight loss. This is the chart we use to determine whether to tighten your band or loosen your band. If you're hungry or snacking a lot, we need to tighten your band. If you're having difficulty swallowing or reflux, we need to loosen your band. We want you in the optimal zone where you're satisfied with small meals and you're having satisfactory weight loss about one to two pounds per week. In terms of the hospital course, patients come in the same day of the surgery. It takes one to two hours to perform the surgery. All patients are walking six hours later, and you go home the same day or the next day, back to work and regular activities in two weeks. The diet is the same as the bypass. The first two weeks is a liquid protein diet. The next two weeks is mushy food. Then after that is regular food. In terms of the follow-up, two weeks postoperatively, six weeks postoperatively, every month for the first year. So the follow-up is more rigorous compared to the bypass or the sleeve for the first year, then every three months for the second year, then every six months for the third year, and then yearly forever. We again want to check a yearly x-ray and nutrition labs to make sure you're taking your daily multivitamins to ensure you don't get vitamin deficient. In terms of the complications after the lap band, infection, bleeding, or blood clots like any surgery, there's a risk of a slip of the lap band, which means the stomach could slip through the band or the band could move. This could require reoperation, usually laparoscopic. It's rare, three to five percent. Erosion of the band. The band is a foreign object made of silicone. If it erodes into your stomach, which is rare, one to two percent, we need to remove the band. Other complications are port or tubing problems. These are relatively minor complications, but it may require a procedure to repair that. Less than expected weight loss or weight regain is about 15 to 20 percent, higher in those who don't follow up for adjustments with an overall long-term reoperation rate of 10 to 15%. So to summarize for the lap band, it's less invasive, 40% of your excess weight loss by two years, less overall weight loss than the bypass or the sleeve, higher chance of weight regain than the bypass, strict follow-up required for adjustments, monthly for the first year. It is the safest option for weight loss because there's no cutting of the stomach. The third option is a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. On the outside, the scars look very similar to the band and the bypass, about five or six very small incisions. On the inside, we are cutting and removing two-thirds of the stomach. It's different than the bypass because we are not bypassing the stomach. Here, we are removing two-thirds of the stomach. It's also different than the band because there's no foreign object being put in. This is the most popular bariatric procedure worldwide. It delivers about 60% excess weight loss on average, which is slightly less than the bypass which is about 60 to 70 pounds by two years if you're 100 pounds overweight. It is a relatively new procedure because there's a lack of data beyond five years about weight loss. We do know up to five years there's more weight loss in the band and less than the bypass. This used to be for high-risk patients undergoing bypass. We would split the bypass into two stages. The first stage would be a sleeve, and then patients would lose weight, and then we'd bring them back a year or two later to complete the bypass. And we found that not everyone required the second stage bypass, and now this is approved as a primary procedure. In terms of the hospital course, patients come in the same day of the surgery. It takes two to three hours to perform. Again, all patients are walking after the surgery, home in two to three days, back to work and regular activities in two weeks. The first two weeks is a liquid protein diet. Then the next two weeks is pureed food. Then after that, regular food. In terms of the follow-up, it's two weeks post-op, six weeks post-op, every three months for the first year, every six months for the second year, than every year forever. Again, we want to check your nutrition labs and make sure you're taking daily multivitamins to ensure you're not getting vitamin deficient. Complications after the lap sleeve include infection, bleeding, or blood clots like any surgery. The main risk is the risk of a leak. If part of the stomach does not heal properly, that could turn into a leak, which is about 2 to 3%. Other risks are nausea or reflux is 10 to 15%. That usually gets better with medical treatment. Weight regain, we don't know long-term. We could be as high as 15 to 20%. So to summarize for the sleeve gastrectomy, 60% of your excess weight loss by two years, more weight loss than the band up to three to five years, less weight loss than the bypass up to three to five years, lack of long-term data over five years. 
So what surgery should I have? I went briefly through the three options, gastric bypass, lap band, and sleeve gastrectomy. I'm going to go through some patients from here and to give you some examples of surgeries that they chose. First is Evelyn. She's 5'2 and 270 back in 2009. She said, I struggle with my weight most of my life, always in pain, problems with my knees, bad arthritis. I walked with a cane, went through depression. She had the gastric bypass. She says, deciding to go for a gastric bypass was the best decision I made in my life. It literally saved my life. We asked her, why would you choose the gastric bypass? She says, I chose the gastric bypass because it was maximum weight loss. I did not want to come in monthly for the band adjustments. I didn't want a foreign object implanted. She says, deciding to do the gastric bypass gave me a second chance of life. My arthritis in my legs and knees is gone. She says, I can walk for miles daily. Give yourself a second chance. We deserve it. This is Jenny. She's a 35-year-old female. She was 5'7", 318 pounds for a BMI 49. She had recurrent urinary tract infections, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and she was borderline diabetic. She had a gastric bypass, lost over 150 pounds over the next four years. Her recurrent urinary tract infections were gone. She says, I chose a gastric bypass because it would help me control my cravings, help me achieve my goals in better ways, especially that I was borderline diabetic. She went on to say that my quality of life has changed so much. I'm able to enjoy more activities with my children. I can actually get on rides without struggling to squeeze into the seat. I'm able to enjoy walking without losing my breath. I'm able to be around for my children most of all and enjoy their milestones with them. This is Maria. She's 5'7 and 290 pounds. This is back in 2008. She said, I've been struggling with obesity most of my life. I tried diets, exercise, and weight loss pills. I decided it was time to try surgical weight loss. This was prompted by increasing health problems and need for more medications. She had the lap band. We asked her, why did you choose the lap band? She said, I chose the lap band because there are fewer post-op complications. It was the least invasive, and my intention was to lose weight gradually, and the band provided that option. It is now several years later, and no regrets. I've lost almost 100 pounds and still eat many of my favorite foods. This is Shanta. She's a 36-year-old female. She's 5'5 five, five and 317 pounds for a BMI 53. She had 30 visits in the year 2009 to the emergency room for asthma. She said, I knew I needed help in losing the weight that was killing me slowly. She had a lap band, lost about 150 pounds in the next six years, and only required three ER visits. She says, I wanted the band to control the weight loss. This is Eric. He's a 47-year-old male. He was height of 6'3", 516 pounds for a BMI 65. He had high blood pressure, sleep apnea, and a history of blood clots. He said, I lost weight and regained weight several times. I needed help, and I couldn't maintain my weight loss without doing something differently. He had the sleeve. He lost over 200 pounds. He says, I realized sleeve was the best option for me. I didn't want the periodic adjustments of the band. I thought the bypass was more radical. It was the best decision I ever made in my life. Keep in mind that all three procedures, including the lap band, provide more weight loss compared to medical and dietary treatment alone. This is the chart that's on our website. I encourage you to read through it. That shows the advantages and disadvantages of the, of the different procedures. And when you come to our clinic, we will discuss these surgical options with you. The gastric bypass may have the biggest impact on diabetes. This is from a study of over 4,000 patients with diabetes who underwent weight loss surgery. And they found that the patients who had gastric bypass, 80% of them, the diabetes went away completely versus about 57% with the lap band. This could be related to a hormonal effect from bypassing the stomach based on animal research studies. However, if you have diabetes for over seven years on insulin, you're less likely to see a cure but still see significant improvement. The other important point is for women of childbearing age, it's really important to wait one to two years for your weight loss to plateau. This avoids exposing the fetus to rapid weight loss, which could be harmful to the fetus. It allows you to achieve the full weight loss goals before getting pregnant. Keep in mind, you're more likely to get pregnant after weight loss from weight loss surgery. That's why we want you to consider an intrauterine device or long-term contraception prior to having weight loss surgery. So to summarize for laparoscopic bariatric surgery, surgery is safe. Surgery is effective, significant weight loss long-term, much greater than diet exercise alone, major improvement resolution in comorbidities, it's considered medically necessary care, it's considered life-saving treatment for severe obesity. However, no operation is a guarantee. Surgery is an aid to weight loss. In order to succeed with surgery, you need to pay close attention to lifestyle and dietary changes after the surgery and be committed to lifelong follow-up. 
This is our surgical team. We've all done extra training in this type of surgery. And we have an entire multidisciplinary team that consists of surgeons, psychologists, nutritionists, and physician assistants and nurse practitioners all to take care of our patients. In terms of the evaluation process after the seminar, you will get an appointment to come to our clinic. You will be evaluated by the surgical team, then the nutritionist, and then the psychiatrist and a medical evaluation. In terms of the preoperative workup, we check labs, x-ray, other tests based on your medical conditions, and then we put all patients on a liquid protein diet preoperatively for one to two weeks to shrink the liver. This helps us do the surgery through the small incisions. Why should you have your surgery done at Bellevue? All the surgery is done by fellowship-trained surgeons. As I indicated earlier, all of the surgeons have done additional training in this specific type of surgery. We have a dedicated operating room and anesthesia team, and we have a specialized team familiar with high-risk patients. We have special equipment with high weight capacity, and we are a certified national center of excellence. Does insurance cover those? Yes, generally, Medicaid, Metro Plus, Health First, Medicare, they all cover the surgery. Keep in mind, every insurance company is different regarding the approval process. If you're uninsured, we have financial counselors that can help you enroll in Medicaid or self-pay at an affordable fee-scaled rate. Do you need a referral from your doctor? Most insurance companies require a referral. If you don't have a referral or can't get a referral, it's still okay to come to your clinic appointment. I will contact your doctor if your doctor is unwilling to give a referral, or we can explore other insurance options. These are the insurances accepted at Bellevue. Keep in mind, every insurance has a different requirement for bariatric surgery. And so when we meet you in the clinic, we will discuss these requirements to ensure that we complete all these requirements in order to get the approval for the surgery. Your date of surgery is going to depend on your insurance and these requirements. If you're uninsured, we have a financial counselor that will screen you for your options. I'm going to go through some frequently asked questions. Which operation do you recommend? It depends on your goals and your risk. All three have been shown to be safe and effective. The bypass is considered the gold standard. It's the most effective long-term with the least chance of weight regain. Which procedure is better if I have diabetes? Based on large studies, any of these procedures will significantly improve or cure your diabetes. However, the bypass is considered more effective in terms of the remission of diabetes. How do you make an appointment in the clinic? Once your registration forms are completed, we will set up the first clinic visit. What if I can't get a referral? We can still see you in the clinic without the referral. If you can't get a referral or your doctor will not refer, I can contact your doctor or we can explore other insurance options. What happens with the excess skin after surgery? You won't necessarily have excess skin. It depends on the procedure. However, we do have a plastic surgery program specifically dedicated to post-bariatric patients. Can I get pregnant after bariatric surgery? Yes, as a matter of fact, you're more likely to get pregnant after surgery due to the weight loss, so therefore it's important to avoid pregnancy for at least one to two years. Do we remove the lap band after I've lost weight? No, because then you're going to gain it all back. Why do some people not lose weight with surgery? It is your eating behavior. Your willingness to change your eating behavior is a number one predictor for weight loss after surgery. Keep in mind, surgery is not a magic bullet. It is a tool to lose weight. It is a new beginning. That concludes the information seminar. I encourage you to call us if you have any questions or send an email to this email address with any questions. Thank you.